Stock G code that is giving you problems, seams that just don't seem to line up, an update to my bamboo saga, all this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 99, the last one before triple digits. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here and you're struggling with some printer issues, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed because we are here to help. In fact, we have an email where you can reach out to us. It's totally free. And I'd love to help you dial in your print settings better. It's YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. Got a great list of print failures and some fixes today. And one of them that continues to remind me that every now and then adding lots of upgrades to a printer can actually create more problems than it solves. Without further ado, let's get on to that first fail. First up, a fail from the Maker Deck Discord from Ronan Ryuk. Sure. We've got an Anycubic Cobra of some sort. It's an Anycubic FDM printer, and they're having some issues here. This is preloaded G-code on the machine, and this does appear to be the stock white filament that it comes with. Take all of that, throw it in the garbage. It's not any good. The printer is skipping steps and what is likely occurring here is either one, your belt is loose, two, the drive gear on the motor has a loose grub screw and is kind of wiggling, or three, which to me is probably more likely, the G-code on the machine is just garbage. Let's load in some new G-code. Let's utilize Prusa Slicer, Super Slicer, Orca Slicer, whatever you want. And recently we did take a look at Orca Slicer. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look. And I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. We've been using it here and have pretty much completely shifted away from Bamboo Studio into Orca, assuming that Orca continues to do updates. That's the big thing with non first party slicers is just making sure they get the updates in a timely fashion. But for this machine here, we definitely want to make sure that we're just trying out new code. Traditionally, people do benchies, but um, we might be working on one of our own. And that is all you get to see of that. Try some sort of bottle like that. A calibration cube is good. A benchy is good, but take some measurements and understand the dimensions of the part itself. That should hopefully help out quite a bit here. Uneven layer lines. Hello, everyone. Hi. Looking for some advice to fine tune my 3D prints. I keep having issues with uneven layer lines, especially in detailed prints. Doesn't seem to be an issue when using vase mode. I've done numerous calibrations, PID, E-steps, flow, etc., but this still seems to persist. The imperfections seem to be intermittent and randomly placed, so I'm less concerned about the Z lead screw wondering if anyone has any experience with similar issues and may have some suggestions or advice thanks it is a neptune 2s with upgraded cooling fans it is rainbow pla 210 on the nozzle 60 on the build plate 40 millimeters per second retraction with five millimeters at 50 millimeters per second so all of those numbers appear well but i would guess that we've got some wiggling going on in the machine maybe not explicitly the lead screw but we should be checking those v wheels to make sure that they're actually okay over time v wheels can loosen up as they wear in or they can just simply come loose that's just part of the deal when dealing with v wheels just like when you deal with ball bearing systems like lm8 uus or mgn 12s that are different types Types of linear guide rails and guide ways, you need to make sure that you keep those properly lubricated and greased from time to time. Similarly with V-wheels, you got to make sure that they're tight. We did an old video on this. We'll card that video so you guys can take a look where we went through and tightened up some V-wheels to get machines like this running in tip-top shape. Wobbly gantry, check wheel tightness. They should not move manually when you try to turn them. Don't over-tighten them. This is critical. I completely agree. You don't want to over-tighten them. Also, make sure that the actual Z-frame of the machine isn't wiggling for some reason. Those bolts can come out. A little bit of blue Loctite will help keep everything in place. And it's something that I recommend when building printers that you do want to run pretty hard but often manufacturers don't because it does make it harder to work on in the future. Anyone have this happen? We've got an Ender 3 Max with about 300 hours of printing on it, was doing PLA at 215, came back after an hour to the smell of burning melted plastic, and this was broken off. Boy, we've got a problem here. So we've got a broken Bowden tube and a kind of 
burned and messed up piece of Bowden tube sticking out of the top of the printer. I would like to see that shroud reattached because potentially there's some wear and tear that's occurring here that created this problem over time. Now, something that a lot of people don't know is that the Bowden tube, that white tube that you see in there, is a wear item and needs to be replaced relatively often. You can get Bowden tube for relatively cheap or you can upgrade to some cap tube if you want to have a slightly better experience. It's cheap enough to make that upgrade. But for something like this, it shouldn't just break on you randomly without any idea that it's happening. You should be able to see that there's something going on here. And then the smell of burning, I'm assuming is the actual piece of PTFE smacking onto the hot, hot end itself. And yeah, a lot of people say that they haven't really seen this, but breaks can happen. In fact, bamboo users see this from time to time where the Bowden tubes will actually wear out and bamboo actually includes a spare set of them, which is great because when you do feed filament at the rates that machines like a bamboo can feed, you're gonna burn through Bowden tube pretty quickly. So be aware of that. Keep spare Bowden tube around and especially for printers like this that do not have all metal hot ends, you will want to replace that Bowden tube relatively often because that heat that that tube undergoes breaks it down pretty quickly. And you, one, don't really want to be breathing that stuff, but two, any extra gunk and buildup down near the hot zone of the hot end will create back pressure that can cause other issues in the print itself. I don't think I've seen one this bad, and maybe it's because I'm not necessarily seeing a burned end here that actually looks pretty clean, but I think it's because it smacked onto the hot end somehow. This, I would assume, is a bit of cable relief and cable strain issues, as well as filament burning through, but 300 hours seems kind of low for something like this. I don't know. What do you guys think? 300 hours of printing seems very, very short in terms of time frame for me to have Bowden tube need to be replaced. Something else might be wrong here, and I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments below. Next up, a fail from a fan who submitted it to our email, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, where I will take a look and do what I can. In fact, I've actually already replied to this, but wanted to show you guys what's going on here so we can take a look and better understand it. We've got a printer that has a... Uh, kind of chucked apart and it doesn't look good. Now, thankfully, it appears to only be in one axis, specifically the Y axis of the printer. There is a video included, but the video doesn't help us out too much. There is something to note here. We can see the failure occurs right as it finishes or is finishing those top layers. It is very common for printers that are over extruding a little bit to have those top layers be a little bit taller than they should be. If you are not running some sort of Z hop, you need to make sure that you run that Z hop. It is incredibly important to making sure that you have a printer that runs well long term. We don't want to have issues with running our printers. We can see we've got some settings here as well. And the one thing that I noticed that set me off is avoid printing parts when traveling and avoid supports when traveling. That is not a very common thing that we see. And what that is often called is combing, where the nozzle actually ride along the perimeters to avoid the actual printed part. This can cause a lot of excess oozing that the printer can slam into. So we say, get rid of those. If you are doing some parts that have very, very technical features on them, you might want to turn it on, but I don't think I've used it in a long time. Something to be aware of. It is not obviously a necessity, but I think those settings here, specifically avoid printed parts when traveling and avoid supports when traveling, absolutely attributed to some of the damage that we see here. And while we do have 0.4 millimeters worth of Z-Hop, we're moving a lot of distance. It's a big part and that can cause some problems here. The other settings seem reasonably good, right? One and a half millimeters of retraction seems fine. Retract speed is good. De-retraction speed is good. And we can see we do have combing enabled and this is within infill. So this is gonna be the machine going through the infill 
to get to the combing. It's something that I really just, I don't like it too much. Speeds are fine, maybe a little bit fast, but you know, if it's printing, it's printing. Line width is another thing. Now, I don't think this is having to do with the actual failure that occurred, but it is something to keep in mind. 0.4 millimeter nozzles should have more than 0.4 millimeter worth of line width. In fact, traditionally you want to do 0.42 to 0.5 worth of line width, because if you're doing a 0.4 nozzle with a 0.4 millimeter line width, it is more often a rounded side than a flatter side when you're moving a little bit beyond the nozzle itself. I believe it was CNC Kitchen that did a video all on line width and why it matters and how much it actually makes for extra strength and it also proved that perimeters really bring a lot of strength while it's not an immediate change that's necessary it is something to think about so thank you to the user that sent it over we greatly appreciate it. and of course we're looking to help you as well so if you have any fails email them over to us youtube at 3 dmusketeers why do my seams look like this occasionally? So we've got some seams on a part where the line has pulled away from the seam a little bit. This can be a pretty rough problem to deal with. This all has to do with your retraction and de-retraction. On singular parts like this, you should not see it. And in fact, this looks like it might even be from a bamboo but it's not it's a very modded ender 3 max which is running clipper and unfortunately i don't have a lot of experience in clipper itself and remember the more you mod printers the harder they are to really diagnose problems because it could be any one of the mods or any multiples of those mods that are causing these problems so when you do mods make sure you do them one at a time and we are going to be doing a modding series to the sv06 and the sv06 plus from sovel to make them be a little bit more reliable and then we're going to put Clipper on them. So as I learned through Clipper, you all should join me. Upcoming live stream series here on the channel. So get subscribed and stay tuned if that's something that you'd like to see happen. This is all from D-Retraction. I'd love to know the mods that were done on this machine, but we can see what we've got here. They tried slowing down prints, changing wipe settings, and lots more. I don't know what could be causing this. Could it be clipper related? Maybe pressure advance? As you see, my print quality is very good, except for my seams. Please share your insights if you know anything. I believe my seam issue started to arise when I switched from Cure to Prusa Slicer, and now even to Orca Slicer. Ah, that explains why the seam looks like something that I see in my bamboo because it's from orca slicer i don't know if it has anything to do with it but the seams look identical to what i see on the bamboo they really enjoy using orca for its other qualities and i do too it's actually kind of nice and i wish to fix this rather than reverting back to kira inside of orca now i'm obviously looking at a bamboo profile but don't worry it's pretty much going to be the same thing the thing that we're looking at here is going to be the seam position and the seam gap. You want to make sure that you are having enough gap. And it looks like in your particular case, you've got too much seam gap. It says in order to reduce the visibility of seams in a closed loop extrusion, the loop is interrupted and shortened by a specific amount. This amount can be specified in millimeters or as a percentage of the current extrusion diameter. The default value is 15%. The parameter name is seam gap. That is something for you to look at. You might also want to look at changing your seam position. It does appear that you might also be retracting for every layer, which is not really needed. But this is where you would be adjusting those settings inside of Orca. Now it could be pressure advance related. I'm honestly not 100% sure because again, when you start modding machines to the nines, you get problems that can start creeping up on you. I would look at comparing the settings that you had in Cura when everything was working well versus now when you're running inside of Orca Slicer and try to really determine what differences may occur. It might be good to take those Orca Slicer settings and apply them into Cura, at least the ones that you can, and then try a test print and see if the problem follows. If it doesn't, then we can kind of ignore the stuff that Cura can see and start looking at the things that Cura cannot. Now, the cool thing about Orca is you can run calibration prints on it as well to really dial in that material. It will be different for each user, so be careful there. Something to potentially catch the newbies, if you will. And I figured, hey, it might be good to update you guys on what's going on with Bamboo. I have given up working with them as a company, but I have been working on my machine 
heavily and doing some extra changes to it that I think have made it run considerably more reliably. Ever since running that carbon fiber through it to get the machine to run okay, it got me thinking that potentially there are other things that we could do to decrease the friction inside of the system. That includes adding some printed parts to help get the material into a PTFE tube sooner, which is what we did and it seems to really help the machine perform. And I say that and it failed to print randomly for me last night when it said the AMS was overloaded. But when I checked on it, it clearly wasn't. And it just kept failing over and over and over again for filament that had printed almost an entire kilo without any issues. It was like the last quarter of the roll was not having it. So ended up switching to a different print file anyways. And so far, it looks like we're doing okay. I will say we also switched build plates. Hector from Fabrico reached out and want us to take a look at the brand new Honey Badger plates, which man, that P series PEI is really nice. It sticks like a hot damn and potentially that darker color means that we might get better LIDAR readings. I don't know for sure because I only had that one challenge where we had a bad LIDAR reading. I am enjoying Orca Slicer, but similar to what this individual has in their problems with the weird seam on their part, I'm seeing that as well. So it means I do need to dial in that percentage or value to look at getting better quality prints. But for the most part, it's not that big of a deal when the rest of the print does look pretty good. We've been really pushing the bamboo to the limits. And in fact, I've got about four days of 24 by 7 3D printing scheduled for it with the Prusas ready to take over should it be needed. We're pushing a lot of the jobs onto the bamboo itself so I can try to find where its limitations are. If you guys know of any, I'd love to know them too. But I am dialing in some profiles that seem to work a lot better than the stock profiles because while you do expect companies to have stock profiles at work, bamboos are not all that well done. In fact, I think they're way too fast for the most part. Anyways, love to know your thoughts down in those comments below. This is the last episode before we hit triple digits, and that means next week is a joke episode. It will be nothing but memes. We're going to have a lot of fun, and I hope you guys will join me there. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel, you can do so by joining Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube channel members. Links, of course, are in that description down below. Right below me will be the other 98 episodes of this series, so you can go back and enjoy looking at fails and how to fix them in the occasional joke episode as well. And right next to that will be our video all about data security and why you should care. We've got a really interesting video coming out on this Wednesday. I think you're going to enjoy it. See you all down in those comments and in the next one. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. Take care.